This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus died, bare sins, according to scripture, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Thank God, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, send me to heal the brokenhearted, Preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is neither even in your heart nor in your mouth. It is the word of faith which I preach. You will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To what it believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. <clears throat> Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Well, welcome all to this broadcast, wherever you're located in the earth, receiving it by live stream, Roku, or other devices. And with me, Paul Peters, co-host. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Everything cool? Everything is cool. Everything is cool. Well, thank God. I uh, am going to be talking about my life uh, and coming to North Texas and what took place when I got here. Thank God. I graduated University of Missouri School of Veterinary Medicine in May of 1962 and I had very good offers in Middle Tennessee to be uh, the veterinarian were top horses and so I went there and won with a horse that won the National Celebration Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration in 1962 after being a veterinarian named Ebony's Masterpiece became a very great breeding stallion and I had others as well. And I wanted th thoroughbred show horses. And that, and I had a high recommendation from the director of clinics, University of Missouri, Dr. Ed Ebert. And I went there for three months, and God didn't want me there. Trouble rose up. I knew it was God lead, to leave. I did. After three months, went back to Missouri and stayed there and worked with a friend of mine, a veterinarian. Uh, I could always work with him because he had a general practice and he liked horses. And he said, you can always work with me if you'll teach me what you know about horses. I said, no problem. So I always had a job with him. I went back there and stayed till January uh, of 1963. Took her to Texas date more and passed it 
and I think it was the 13th of February, I left to come to Texas. I was very blessed God was in all of this, and I know that. God had ordered my steps, and I didn't even always know it. I thought it were probably true, but I wasn't sure. So a man from Texas who had 300 brood mares and six stallions visited me in October of 62 in Missouri at a horse sale. And he said, if I would come to Texas, he would give me his business. I could be his veterinarian. Well, I knew it were God, and I did what I thought was right, came to Texas. Two weeks after I went to work, Jerry Bear King, veterinary hospital in McKinney, the Seabar Ranches called me from Salina and also Stephenville and Abilene. They had horses, and I became the veterinarian, just like they told me. But it was all God. I don't credit any man with any of this. In 1964, I opened my own practice in McKinney, Texas. And in 1960, well, I need to back up. Uh, President Kennedy was assassinated in 63. That just floored me. I couldn't believe my president. I did not I was not a great fan of his, but he's a president of the United States. You just don't do that, kill presidents. But it shook me up in a great way. Rest of 63, that was in November, I believe. 63 and then 64, I opened my own practice. And then 64 and 5, my practice flourished. 66, doing great, 1967, I started building 121 Veterinary Hospital south of McKinney and west of US 75, maybe a quarter of a mile or less. But Shortly after that time, God, after 67, in building my hospital, all that I was doing, God was talking to me, referring back to August 1, 1958, Columbia, Missouri, University of Missouri campus, August 1, God visited me and said, I do not want you to be a veterinarian, but a minister of the gospel. I couldn't do it. But that call went out that day. You can read about it on my website. Amen. It never changed. Never changed. When I was building a hospital, God was talking. And back, an angel in 68 started sitting in the right front seat of my Pontiac. I drove Pontiac Catalina's four door. And that angel, God's angel, not that angel, pardon me was sitting there, I'm quite sure it was my angel, saying, when are you going to preach the gospel? I think, could you leave me alone? Could you just leave me alone? No. No, I'm not going to leave you alone because I've called you and the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So certainly 
is 68. That is 68 at my Bible under the front seat of my car. And God was talking to me. I was a very busy veterinarian at a farm in Texas uh, on a partner partnership in an arena in Al. And I was busy. God was talking. He never gave up. He won't give up. He's God. We're not. Thank you, Lord. So certainly in 68, I'd be driving down the highways and God would be pushing me over and I'd pull up and open my Bible and look at it, pull up on the shoulder, open my Bible and those words just stood up. I'd never seen words alive. They just stand right up my face. I was somewhat familiar with the New Testament. And that's where I read. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John primarily, but others as well. And God was talking. It was actually frightening. I think I probably called it freaky. How is it that these words are so alive or just stand up and talk to me? In 1969, God really got involved He's already been involved, but now he's talking. Now he's really talking. Uh, and he tells me to sell 121 Veterinary Hospital and obey. Thank God. Hallelujah. I did reluctantly read about it. But probably well after July, maybe August, God led me to some scripture and started talking to me about them. And that's Ephesians chapter 1, what is it, 13 and 14? Yes. Would you read those? In whom you also trusted, out of that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Back up and read before in whom, I know who that is, but what does it say one or two verses before? That we should also, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom also you, tr you trusted. Trusted in Christ, right. then in whom, right? Right. Now, I would read that, and I'd say, there's a second experience here. There is a second experience here. What could that be? So, let's read, what, 13? I'll start in 12. 12, okay that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, out of that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That got me. After you believed. You see, God was opening the Bible to me. And it was really open. After. I know what after meant. After you believe, you believe what? Does it say gospel of your salvation? Right. Right. After you believe, did I struggle? I thought. After you believe the gospel, I knew what salvation was. I was born again when I was almost six. I knew what salvation was. 
I attended a John Wesley Holiness Methodist Church all my life. They had faith, some of them. And I knew about being born again, being saved. I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. But I could see after you have believed, read that verse again. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Believed the gospel of my salvation, right? Right. After. Yes. Something else is going to happen. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord, was it shaky. So, in June, May, in 1970, I went to Tennessee. I sold my practice, and I was working there in horse stables, horse farms. People that I knew had been up there and trained their horses. And I was talking to my sister, Betty Jackson. I said, all right, Betty, these verses here, I read them to her. I said, does that say there's a second experience? She said, yes. That's after you're saved? Yes. Is that second experience called the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Yes. Uh, when you get it, do you speak in tongues? Yes. Do you know anybody that has it and speaks in tongues? Yes. I said, is it you? She said, yes. I said, you know anybody besides you? <laughs> she said, yes. I know Derek and Lydia Prince and their meeting in Chicago uh, two or three days at a meeting and Alan, our oldest son, would be happy to take you, go with you and introduce you to Derek and Lydia. That's what happened. We went, thank God, met them, read about the rest of it. But uh, I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, July 24th, uh, 1970. Sitting in bed at midnight, read about that. What interested me came about just last evening. And it's about Jane Downey. And I was talking to Terry, Terry Brown, Jane's daughter, discussing what went on in Jane's life. Jane was a graduate, or graduate from University of Texas, taught on economics, I believe, in Texas and the Dallas school system. And Jane was born again when she's five or six years of age. Not too long back, she said she had always known Jesus, always been saved. Says she's five or six. And yes, she was ready to go to heaven. What I heard last night from Terry, somewhere in the late 60s, perhaps, or early, or 1970, God was working in Jane's life. She started reading the Bible. This is her daughter telling this to me. Just last night, and I expect daughter knows uh, how Jane would read that Bible, how she was stirred. And the more she talked, the more I knew that the same God that was after me 
in all those years, but especially 67, 68, and 69, showing me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He knew I was saved, but he was about to lead me in to the charismatic movement. And he knew that I wasn't going to trust just any man that walked down the road. I could read, and I was honest, had an honest heart, an honest intellect, and I knew it. And I wasn't about to listen to some embellisher or someone that twisted the scripture. I just wasn't going to do it. But God was moving during that very same time in Jane's life, preparing her to become a part of Water of Life Ministries. Some years later, actually 15, 16, 17 years later, I saw so clear last night talking with Terry God's plan with Jane was simple. Her faith, a woman of, with faith that lived, that walked with faith, had works of faith. And he wanted her to come to the water of life. But let's go further. He wanted her to come to water of life because he had, because she had a daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren going to be at water of life. And I watched, I saw this as clear as a picture to me what God was doing in those years in my life and James. Now, uh, in 1970, I had sold everything, moved back to Texas, and living in, in Argyle. And there was a, a young man from Kansas Russell, Kansas, that graduated from what, Fort Hayes, I think they call it, Fort Hayes State, whatever it is, and he was an opera singer, he was a, a stage actor, he was back up to Van Johnson. The guy was talented, great talent, a great bass, bar baritone voice. His press, I asked him one day to sit. He said, no, come on, Terry. Terry, bye. I want to see it. He gave it to me. I said, I knew you were that good. I knew you were. He didn't want a lot of praise. Oh, like all of us, he'd take it. But he had some humility. Well, guess what? I needed a singer with my ministry. And God told me one day that Kathy's husband, my daughter, her husband, would, be, would not be in Texas, but would be in the Methodist Church. So we get back. I'd been, I'd gone to that church off and on, a religious uh, attendance, <laughs> but got there, looked around, I didn't see any young men there 
that I thought was going to be my son-in-law. But Terry had left Merchant United Methodist Church in McKinney. They had no plans to come back, if I remember correctly. But he came back. And I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, whatever it was, September, amazing what God was doing. Glory. And that was 77. Well, God had plans for Terry to come with Mary Catherine, covered by ministry, be the mother of three daughters and my daughter's husband. And when he went to heaven in old line, they came forth as of my girls ministering in song. And they had my faith, Terry's faith, which Terry's faith basically came out of my heart. We're not going to be super spiritual. Mine came from Dad and Luke and, and Burkhart and Elliot Hodge and a woman named Johnson. Look, folks, you didn't just show up on the scene and pop your capsule, look at me. I'm a big person of faith. No, God had somebody way back praying, had faith, had faith, and it's God's faith, it's not ours. That's great. But so, in old nine, here comes the buys. Ministry. Water black boys start ministry. And then water black boys, there's Philip Brown, David Brown, Daniel Brown. And then there's a a young man that also came from Kansas. About thirty miles is father was raised about 30 miles from where Terry Bye was raised. And his son, uh, well, that's Paul Peters. He was born in this ministry. And when Terry went to heaven, Paul started singing at his age 15. So God brought Paul brought Terry, he brought forth the buys, he brought Paul, and he brought Philip Brown, David Brown, and Daniel Brown, and he brought Terry Brown, who he anointed, God anointed, back somewhere, I forgot what year, to play the piano. I think it's the 80s. And she started playing the piano by ear, anointed of God. And then she starts, her life gets changed in 07, 08, 09, God's working. In her life, I'm sorry, seven and eight, nine, he really went to work in her life. And somewhere, well, I don't know when, but 10 or somewhere, God started dealing, might have been nine, dealing with her family, her children. And she got strong. In vain. And then they start singing at home, maybe before. I'm not sure when. Old died, maybe before that. But 
God was raising them up, raising up the brothers, raising up a quartet with Paul, Peters, and the Brown brothers. Listen to them. And then God started bringing Terry forth and ministered with them. I believe it was the first song they did was Terry the Brown. I'm sure they did one before that. I know they did, but I don't think it was so public. But looking for a city, Thanksgiving 13, I believe it was. Now, what I'm telling you, well, today, you'll have to see what God's brought forth with Paul, with Terry, and the Browns, the Brown brothers, Terry, the Browns, oh, Jenny, Luann, daughter-in-law, and Terry Brown and Paul Peter. Y'all miss anything? I think I covered all of it. I think we got it. Look what God did from that move that he started in 1958, Columbia, Missouri, then Texas in the 70s, 60s, at the same time, working in Jane Downing's life. Oh, by the way, for all of you that think that some of you are probably that blind, that I'm the one that moved on Terry Brown and should never followed God at all. You're mistaken. When she was high school or college, she went to a Bill Gothard seminar. And the scripture was read and God put it in her heart. Want to read it? Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. God put that in Terry's heart. She never even heard of me. Then, sometime in the early 80s, I think, she went to a Melton Green seminar. And Melton Green showed her, all of them, what was in the Bible about healing. And Jerry sat there in dismay, like, goodness, look here, look here, look here, what the Bible says about healing. She never heard of me. Never. Neither had her mother. But what was God doing? Getting ready to bring her to Water of Life Ministries. You know what's interesting? When her mother Jane in 85 said she'd been all over the Metroplex, there was just one church that had power, and that was Water of Life, and she wasn't going anywhere else but here. Well, Terry thought that was strange. But she lived with it. And I'm not sure her and Steve lived in Plano or I think that's right. I know it is. And they weren't coming to water block. One night, Jane called Steve, called Terry, and said, I want to talk to Steve. Steve answered the phone. She said, you need to go to water block meeting tonight. That's what I'm told. So he went. You'll have to hear the rest of the story. She had Jane's faith 
and great influence in this ministry. My faith has great influence in this ministry. And God was putting all of this together today. I have the My Girls Ministry song, the Terry Ministry with the Browns in song, Terry, the Browns, Paul Peters in song, and Terry Solo. Look what God did. He knows what he's doing, folks. You'll just have to humble yourself and stay out of the way and see what God is doing. So, all this message for today came about from a conversation last night with Terry and she brought up her mother. Well, thank God. And I praise the Lord. I will tell you, Jane's funeral services are tomorrow. God has a time for everything. Acts says God has appointed the times and the seasons or the bounds, I believe it is. Bounds. Right, bounds and times, right? Yeah. For our habitation. Amazing. So folks, just get all excited about what God is doing beginning in the heart of a southwest Missouri <laughs> country boy, son of a contractor, born again when he was under six. And by the way, that contractor worked Kansas City, St. Louis, Jefferson City, Joplin, Springfield, all over the state of Missouri. And this kid went with him when he could, working in all these cities. So raised on a farm, and there wasn't any farming. That was dad's weekend and nightly toy like I later had mine. Amen. Thank God. But God started it and no man can stop it. I'm talking about he started it with me. I know that. Look, he called Abraham alone. He called me alone. I know that. But God brought people around Abraham and God has brought people around me. Thank God. What time is it? 11.38. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paul had an uncle. Is that right? Yes. What, would you talk a little about him? Sure. Uh, on my mom's side, most of the people grew up in the Lutheran church. And my uncle, my mom's brother, he plays the organ for his, the Lutheran church and also sang in the choir. He sings tenor in his choir at the Lutheran church. Amen. Oh, I got something else to say about Terry Brown. Did you know her family spent about nine years? Well, first of all, they were in the Richardson United Methodist Church when Terry was in elementary school. Yeah, they came from Austin, Texas, out of college, her parents. But then they started attending Believer's Chapel. Believer's Chapel. I think nine years. You left her hear their story. They went 
from there to church on the rock, which fell. I call it church on the sand. It went there a year and a half. And then Jane found Walter Bly. God led her here. He had a plan and this developing, coming into focus. In 1971, God, September, God told me, pray for revival in North Texas. I did all the missions develop. But friends, the nucleus is here. Men tried, men tried and found, found that our God brings a man, our God brings. That's the latest song out by modern black people. But there's a name. There's a name under heaven. There's no other name but that name. Whereby one must be saved. And that name is Jesus. Jesus. No other name under heaven. Whereby one must be saved. But Jesus, if you want to be saved, repeat Jesus after me. If you want to be born again, repeat Jesus after me. Same thing as being saved. If you want to be joined to the Lord, one spirit, repeat Jesus after me. Same thing as being born again being saved, speaking after me, Jesus, 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 God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.